Finally, brethren, y'all all right? Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Those things which you both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And, somebody say and. and. The God of peace shall be with you. Hallelujah. He's given us directives on how God, the God of peace, will be with us. He's giving us some parameters of thought. And if you know, if your thought life is not really in this wheelhouse of thoughts, or if you don't have, let me say it like this, if you don't have a good mentor, okay, leader, pastor, apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, church, if you don't have a, a good someone to learn from, because I, I know I needed help. I needed help, and, and I'll tell you this, when I was in a certain denomination, I'm not going to say anything about it, I'm not talking about the denomination, I could have been raised anywhere and grew to the level of learning that was in that denomination. And then begin to evaluate the Word of God based upon what I was learning and say, what's missing? And say, okay God, I, I see it in your Word I don't see it in my life. I need to find someone who has that in their life so I can learn from them. Come on, somebody. See, don't, don't be ashamed. I, I've said this before. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're probably not learning anything anymore. Leave the room. Find a room where you're uncomfortable so you can learn again. You need to be around people who push you into that next level. Come on, somebody. Someone who's going and setting an example ahead of you. That's why he said those things which you've learned and received. Some things can be taught, but some things have to be caught. That's why Paul said, I long to be with you so that I can impart into you. That's why this is so important. Say this with me. This, the church, is important. Being in church is important. It's valuable. Yes, sir. Yes. He said, I long to see you. When you see somebody, I, I'm thankful for every person watching. And some people are, you know, they're landlocked, if you will, or they're homebound. They can't get out of They got home five minutes before church started from work, and they've jumped online. They're trying to get their kids ready. I understand all that. But I'm talking about if you can be in the room. Yes. Somebody say amen. Amen. Pack a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Come straight from work. Whatever you got to do. Somebody say amen. I used to bring my work clothes to church. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. I used to bring my work clothes to church so that if we held too long, I could stay there just as long as I needed to. I'd done a Superman change in the bathroom and went straight to work. I worked second shift, and I was associate pastor, and I was telling somebody the other day, they hired four people when I left that church. Four people. Mowers, baptistry cleaners, people who cleaned the building. Started paying them. I never got anything but my name on the door. That really didn't help me much. <laughs> But you need to understand the, the, how valuable this place and this moment is right here. That, that's what he's saying. He said, what you've seen me do, what you've learned, and what you've received. What? By impartation. Yeah, that's right. I mean, when you plug in, when you're in the room, you receive. Amen. 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 Not that the word can't go forth where you are, but there's something about that connection. So to be occupied, the Lord said this to me, and I'm going to say it again because you really need this 
this paragraph or this thought process in your spirit. To be occupied with certain facts, thoughts, you're going to have to step away from fellowship with God. When you get, now when I say that, boy, that's just, that's just like a hush goes over this place. God is not going to stay in a place. Y'all ain't going to say much. He's, he, he, when, you, when you entertain and you're occupied with certain facts or thoughts, you'll have to step away from fellowship with God. Why? Why? That's the word. The word is truth and the word is God. So if you're entertaining certain facts, you're not entertaining truth, and truth is the Word of God. So when you're entertaining certain thoughts or certain facts, truth is outside of what you're entertaining. And what happens when we start entertaining certain thoughts? Their strongholds get developed. How many of you know God can't be tied up? So obviously God's left the building. Casting down imaginations. Come on. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, right? We have to be willing to get these thoughts out of our life because it's ruling our life. It's reigning. Adam and Eve fell from a, a place because of a thought. That was the beginning. The ending result was he got them out of the garden so they wouldn't eat from the tree of life so they wouldn't live forever in an unredeemed state. I've said that before here years ago. But the, the reason why was they heard a suggestion. Did God say? Well, as soon as you begin to question what God's Word says, you step out of fellowship with God. Right? So when you're thinking is stinking, God ain't in there. That's why he gives us these ideas here, this, this thought process. And he says, think about this. Think on these things. Are y'all okay? So how, how do we cleanse our thought life? Well, John, John chapter number 15, verse number 3 the NASB says, you're already clean because of the word which I've spoke to you. He told, he, when he was teaching, Jesus was teaching, this is read in the King James Version with red letter edition. He said, you're clean because of what, you've sp what I've spoke to you. The Amplified Classic, how does it read, Pastor Farrah? Just... You are clean and freed already because of the word which I've given you to teach on. The teachings I have discussed with you. In other words, he's replacing. So the word, when you put the word in or the teaching of the word of God, the truth of the word of God, you're not really forgetting other things. You're replacing things. You're getting, you're getting replacement thoughts. God thinking. Not positive thinking. God thinking. You take on the mind of Christ. Amen. Say this with me. I can have the mind of Christ. I can think God thoughts. Yeah. I can think what Jesus... You know how you do what Jesus did? You think what Jesus thought. The reason why we don't see miracles is because we don't have a good idea of what the Word of God says about us so we see ourselves unworthy to receive when Jesus said, greater work shall you do. You're like, well, I don't understand. A lot of people try to explain that away, but it's, you can't get rid of it. He said, you can do greater works. Greater in scope, greater in depth. Come on. You can do greater works. Somebody say amen. So, they were made clean by the word they were receiving. See, if you don't receive the word, you can't be made clean by it. What you receive is what you're walking in. So if you're thinking bad thoughts, unredeemed thoughts, you're thinking poorly of yourself, you have a poor what? Self-image. If you think I was born this way, 
If you don't have the right type of thinking, you're going to live the wrong type of life. You have to bring the truth to the facts, not the facts to the truth. You have to bring the truth to the facts. See, I don't, you can't live your life from facts to truth. You have to live your life from truth. How, what did he say? He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. He said, I want you to start decreeing what's in heaven is in the earth. And I say it like this, it's not just on the earth, it's in the earth. See, you've got to get heaven minded and heaven inside of you before you're going to ever see heaven on the outside of you. Don't you know you're the temple of the Holy Ghost right now? It's Christ in you. The hope of glory already inside of us. We got different thinking. See, I can't think about who I was. Why? Because I'm a new creature. Well, things used to be. I, I don't want to hear about how things used to be. They're not that way. I'm redeemed. I had people walk, I was telling somebody today, they, they said, well, where you go to church? I told them where I went to church. What? I told them where we got started. They said, well, I'm trying to think where the church is. I said, you in church. Well, I'm the biggest sinner. I said, you ain't the biggest sinner. You can Google search me, ma'am, find me. You ain't, you ain't that good. <laughs> I said, she had a ticket thing, you know, where she's been running numbers. I said, if you was to pull mine up, it'd just keep going and roll down the driveway and out, the, out down, down the street. The things I've done wrong. I said, I've been redeemed. God saved me. I just reached up there and ripped that ticket thing off and threw it on the floor. She went, I said, well, that's what he gives you. A fresh start. All that stuff's gone. A clean, come on somebody. We got new stuff we're putting in now. Come on somebody, we're not, we're not running on the old numbers, the old, come on, the way it added up before, it adds up different now. Look at your neighbor say, we got new thinking. Dr. Summerall, I told the story about Dr. Summerall, I want to tell another one about Someone different tonight, since you heard Dr. Summerall's story. Did you hear it? How many of you did hear it? Well, three of you heard it, and the rest of you wasn't listening. Dr. Summerall, or wasn't here, maybe. Don't leave mad. <laughs> she ain't leaving. I just gave her a hard time. Dr. Summerall, uh, went to a nation, I can't remember the nation, I can't remember, Indonesia, I believe that's where he was, yeah, and uh, they, they had a lady there that was possessed, she had been attacked by a gang, and during this attack, her life just went downhill because she kept rehearsing that same thing over and over, so they took Dr. Summerall to her, and he cast that demon out of her, and it was World, it, I mean, everybody heard about it. But actually, I remember him telling the story one time. She jumped off the top of this, the shifero on him. She was bare naked. Shifero's where you hang clothes. Uh, oh, no. uh, anyway, that's all right. Anyway, it, it's like a wooden thing, and she was up on top of that thing. He said that he come through the door, and she was up on top of it and dove off on him, bare naked. He said, I cast the devil out of her. Some of you looking at me like, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> Shippero, yeah. Shippero. Everybody had one. Like, uh, what was that? What was that wardrobe closet? You know, wardrobe. Like a who? Armoire. Ain't not one of y'all can spell armoire. Well, maybe a couple of you can anyway. But she got, she got, she, the devil got cast out of her. And look, the newspapers and media, and she started living right, going to church, lived her life for a long time. Well, in a few years down the road, the, the 
media come to her with a deal and said, we want you to tell your story and we're going to make a movie. And, uh, huh? They're going to make a movie about it. So she started telling her story. And when she let it out, she let it in. Okay. She rehearsed that story. And she remembered and she let it out. So when she let it out, she was telling that story. Instead of telling God's story about her life, she started telling the devil's story about her life. And before you know it, they called Lester Summerall back and said, she's possessed again. Well, the more she told the story, the stronger it got. And before you know it, she'd lost everything. She was possessed by a demon. And he, he asked one question. He said, what's she doing? They said, she's telling the story. He said, tell her to quit telling the story. Tell her to go back. Come on, somebody. Go back to start telling the story about what God said about you. Y'all telling the wrong story. Y'all telling the wrong story. Every time you, I, I just need to tell it. You don't need to tell it. You, you want sympathy. And sympathy's not taking you out of anywhere. Well, or you say this down south, we like to say it like this. Well, I just want to tell you this so you can be praying. That's a lie. You're a gossip and you know it. You ain't even prayed for them before you told the story to who you're telling it to. Oh, it's getting loud in here now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to back up over here. I'm concerned. <laughs> Update your current information. You're updating your current information about where your life is going when you start thinking wrong thoughts. I've said it, I don't know how many times here. What? Change your Do you believe that? Yeah. Seriously, I mean, do you believe that that's true? Yeah. Then why aren't we doing that? Right. You're all like, yep, I believe it. That's 100% true. I believe that. Well, why are we not doing it? You've got to work on this. I look in my house, we just, Pastor Farrah, she don't let up, man. She, Amen. so, <laughs> she won't let up. Like, she will just, you know, she likes, I mean, she loves for me to be better, right? She even has a secret prayer list in her phone that has a password to get into, things she's praying for for me, and I can't even read it. I thought, boy, it must be some serious stuff going on in there. But that's good, right? She's praying for me, and I'm thankful. But boy, in my house, when you say something wrong, she'll say, and that's the way you want it. Say, I don't know what we're going to do. And that's the way you want it. Well, I don't see how we're going to get through the end of the month. That's the way you want it. Why? Well, why she say that? Because if you're saying it, that's how you're going to get it. You're going to eat the fruit of your lips. Right? Life and death and what? Well, do we believe the Word of God or not? Think about what I think. Think about it. Think about it. Let it run around in your spirit before you say it. Don't run it through your emotions and then speak. Run it through your spirit and then speak. Now, everybody that knows me from back in the day knows this about me. If I'm smiling, somebody's about to get whipped. Nothing excited me more. I never said a word. I'd just be walking at them like, this is going to be so much fun. It's true. And then that fight would be over. They'd be knocked out or whatever, laying on the ground. And I'm still smiling. Yeah, excited. They'd just be yak, 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 yak. And I'm like, you're wasting your energy and your breath. You're going to need that in a minute. Some of you are like that. You do a lot of talk, but there's no action. Look, when God tells us the word to speak, it comes with power. Let me give you, let me give you this scripture. This, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go slow. 
Never attend, I, I said this the other day, out of Proverbs 4.20, you can go back and read it, I'm not going to read it all, but he said, my son, attend to my words, pay attention to my words. Never attend, never attend more to other people's words or words above God's word. I don't care what it is, a good report, bad report. If it don't line up, don't receive it. Don't say you understand to somebody who says something stupid. Or if somebody comes to you with something and they're trying to get you to listen to them, and they say, you know, do you get it? And you say, yeah, I get it. Then yeah, now you're agreeing with it. Don't, don't agree with a fool in his folly. Before you know it, you'll be agreeing with somebody. The blind can't lead the blind. You've got to have somebody see. You just stand there and look at them and go. Well, we'll be praying about that. If I ever answer you when you say something really dumb and I say, you know what, I'm going to be praying about that for you. <laughs> then you know you just said something really dumb. <laughs> Pastor Farrah's secret's going down the road. <laughs> Mark, she tells me that all the time. Or, or I love you. <laughs> I love you. I just want you to know I love you. I pray for you. Go home. <laughs> Did you just get that text? That <laughs> there you go. Now you know. Yeah. Don't look. Look. I'm trying to get you to think about what you're in agreement with. Think about it. Seriously. Ser you can't be coming into agreement with people on stuff that's going to kill them. Dr. Hahn, Dr. Hahn, Dr. Hahn, Dr. Hahn. Y'all remember the story of Dr. Hahn? Dr. Hahn, I go to the hospital every time I go to the hospital. You know, I go for a checkup, VA, go wherever I go, you know. And, you know, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not saying I ain't ever been a doctor, but I go to the doctor and they hand you that form and it's got everything you can agree with that runs in your family. I don't check a box. I don't check not one box. I never have. Ever since I understood faith and understood the power of agreement, I don't check boxes that I'm trying to get something into my life for. Amen. Well, how many people die in your family of heart disease? Well, my mom and my grandma, my, you know, and I start checking boxes, and I'm coming into agreement that this runs. Y'all going to say anything? This runs in my family. Well, I'm not in that family now. I've had a blood transfusion. I've got a heavenly father. Come on, somebody. I got new blood. I, I tell the doctor this. They say, you didn't check any boxes. You don't have any. No, I don't have any allergies. Are you on any medication? Yeah, prescription. I take prescription every day. They, they, they come in there. I say, just do your job. They paid you to go to school so you could figure out what was wrong with people. I'm not going to give you a clue. I'm going to make you work for it. Somebody's going to have to pay you a lot of money to get to work. Right? So Dr. Han comes in there after she runs some tests. She comes in there and she said, well, uh, I, she's ch Chinese, so you have to forgive me. My Chinese, I, I like doing it. It's, I think it's funny. Oh, I... You, you got a high blood pressure. I write you a prescription for blood pressure medication. I said, I don't need it. Oh, she's sitting like over at a desk. And I'm right there up on a table, you know. She's typing. Them little fingers is wide open. She looks up and says, Oh, you don't want medication. I said, No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, your your di uh, your sugar levels. I'm going to give you some diabetic medication. You know, you need. I said I don't want that. You don't want. Now she's getting a little bit more frustrated. Like, you don't want. I said no, ma'am. She said, uh, why you come see me? 
I said, so I know how to pray. I've got to bring some truth to these facts. I've got to bring some truth to these facts. I said, I need to know how to pray. This is what I'm working through. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I've been praying. I ain't getting no answer. I need some clarity. What are we praying about? I, I speak to high blood pressure. I declare it comes down in the name of Jesus. I say, my, come on, I say, come on. I say my sugar levels are right in the name of Jesus. Why you come see me? That's the funniest. I love it because now I can preach from there. You know, when you live that way, go home. Mark chapter five, verse nineteen. Go home to your friends. And tell them how great things the Lord has done for you. Amen. 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 That's how you walk in a miracle life. You just start telling what God's done for you. Tell them what He's done. Tell them what He's going to do when you see your friends. Why was He telling them Mark 5? Why did He tell them to go home? Look, we need to have a testimony in the earth about how good. He does great things. Whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. John 14, 13. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassion fails not. They're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Somebody say amen. amen. Go to John 6, 47. Let's see that. Let's put it up King James Version if you please. There's a portion of that scripture I want to pull out for you to take home with you tonight. He that believeth on me hath. He that believeth on me hath. Say it again. He that believeth on me hath. I'm not trying to get it. I got it. I, I said, I'm not trying to get it. I got it. I'm not going to get it. It's not going to show up someday. We're not going to have it in the sweet by and by. No, I have it right now. You say, you believe in eternal life? Absolutely. We're going to live forever somewhere. You got two choices after you die. Smoking or non-smoking. That's the two choices you got. I'm going to non-smoking. Amen. 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 So he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me has everlasting life. So he's saying, look, once you set your believer in motion, you have what you believe in for. Say unto this mountain, whosoever shall what? Say unto this mountain, whoever what? Believes that those things, Mark eleven twenty two 22 through 26, whoever believes that those things which he saith shall what? Have Whatsoever he says. Kenneth Hagin said there's a three to one ratio. Say, say, say. Say, 11, 22 through 26. It says say three times. How many of you know saying's important? Anytime you run at your giant, don't run at your giant with your mouth closed. Tell it what's going to happen. I'm going to take your head off today. Today the fowls are going to be eating your carcass. Come on. You got to look at your mountain and you got to tell your mountain today. Come on, somebody. You got to start speaking to that thing. Believing is having, it's possession. What it means to believe, it's possible for us to learn the key of believing. Again, the word believe is a verb, the word faith is a noun. Believing, therefore, is the verb of faith. It's to act. You can't believe without acting. There's a law that governs believing. What's that law? Out of your belly. Out of the good treasure. Of what? Good heart. The mouth speaks. Speaks about what? Good things. If you got it inside of you, it's going to come out of you. The reason why you don't speak more word and you speak more flesh is because you got more flesh than you do word. 
Come on, you've memorized how your mama act, you act just like her. You put your hand on your hip like her, you talk like her. Come on, she could cuss you out and hold a cigarette in her mouth and never flinch, putting on mascara at the same time. <laughs> Driving a five-speed, she had major skills. I told me Farrah was talking the other day about my mama. My mama was a samurai warrior, man. She could drive with her knees, look in that little bitty mirror on a Volkswagen, drove Volkswagen for a long time, years ago, putting on lipstick, and I'd act bad, and she could hit me and never stop moving what she was doing. <laughs> right, I mean, right in the mouth. I'm like, I couldn't get my mouth away from her anywhere I was. I was like Anderson Silva trying to go Matrix on her, and she's like, whoosh, every time. She was something else. <laughs> she is awesome. Go to Genesis 15, 6. Y'all okay? Y'all all right? I mean, you, you, you already sacrificed and come all this way. We might as well get something out of it. Right? We might as well get something out of it. Like, I don't know how much they pay me exactly. My wife could tell you exactly what I make, but I, I know surely it's worth me being here another 30 minutes, ain't it? Yes, sir. Thank you, Pastor Barry. Genesis 15, 6. And he and Abraham believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. As soon as he believed, he was righteous. The Lord counted his belief. Belief for him was an action. He had to what? Leave? Go? To a place I'm going to tell you as you go? Sounds like being led by the Spirit of God. That's why Abraham was a father of faith. He was going. Come on, somebody. As he was being led. Come on. And many of us need to understand tonight, we got to take the word that God has. we got to believe God now. And God's going to count it to us right now in this moment as we already have it. As soon as you start putting your faith out there for your harvest, God already says you have your harvest. Here's the word. Believe means to support, be established, to stand firm. Abraham made an unqualified committal to God. He abandoned himself utterly to God. He gave up all and he had no other help. I was preaching years ago and I was preaching faith like this and this person, I, I knew when they did it, they didn't have the faith to do it. Sometimes you can take a faith step that you ain't prepared to take. Lester Summerall said, don't be, believing, don't be believing for an airplane when you ain't got enough faith to get a bicycle. Learn how to take steps of faith. Walk by faith. Learn how to live by faith. Start believing God for the things. Believe Him for a parking place. Amen. We, we believe God for parking places all the time. Every time I get it, you know what I say? There's the favor of the Lord. Lord, keep me from idiots today as I walk through the valley of Walmart. <laughs> and now I get out of Walmart. I say, thank you, Lord. You surrounded me with favor. <laughs> Amen. Didn't get no idiot interaction today. Thank you, God. I tell the Lord all the time, I don't know if my flesh is completely where it needs to be, so if you put me in front of a really big idiot, I may have a really big problem. <laughs> so he keeps me from. If he says, go this way, I listen good, because if I go that way, I may run into one of them. Got to, but I'm telling you, in this day and time, you've got to pray just to make it today. That's what, uh, who said that? Who said that? <laughs> I knew somebody had it, so I was going to ask, you know. There's a couple people already laughing, so I knew it was coming. <laughs> first step. Somebody say the first step. The first step in faith is reaching the place where you abandon all. Amen. That's right. 
You can't trust God with all your heart as long as you're leaning on your own understanding or someone else. If you trust any other, you cannot fully trust him. Faith, like love, demands all. You cannot derive love's best as long as you have any other idols. As long as you trust in yourself, you can't trust in God. Me and Pastor Fair have been battling this same battle for two years and running in this church. We, me and her, J- JCM, has faced two giants, two years running now, where we've had to step into what we could do to make something happen. Two years. I'm not going to say what it is, but for two years, same battle. We've lost it two times. I told the Lord today, I said, Lord, we got a, a while before this comes back up. <laughs> Are you going to show me between here and there how to whip this giant? Do I need to work on this sling? I'm going to have to whip a bear? Yeah. Y'all ain't going to. Get mad, don't get mad about not whipping that giant. Go back to the bear. Yeah. Rehearse your victories. Come on, somebody. Start, start rehearsing your victories. Thank God that we've won what we've won. Thank God we've done what we've done. Thank God we've made it where we made it. Now, God, show us how to face what we're facing. The Lord told me today when I was thinking about this, he said, you know what David asked? This is what David asked. He said, what are you going to get? Think about that. He said, what, what's a person going to get? He was saying, what's the harvest for this battle I'm facing? Well, you're going to have victory, and this nation's going to have victory. You ain't going to pay taxes, and you get to marry this gal, decent gal at the time. I think she changed. But, you know, he, he had in mind the victory that was coming. He put his faith out there for the promise. Come on, somebody. I've already got my faith out for the promise. For the next time this battle comes, I've got my faith out there already that I'm going to win this victory. Amen. Amen. And that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. The first step in faith is where, the, where you abandon all. Faith like love demands all. You can't not derive love's best as long as you have any other idol. As long as you trust in yourself, you can't trust in God. As long as you are looking elsewhere for help, you're not trusting the Lord. Absolutely. The law of trust is utter abandonment. So Lord, the Lord told me what I did wrong. You know, I share my whole life with you guys. I'm very open. So there was an opportunity came up and I took the opportunity and I put it back in fear that I wouldn't have it. Okay. Instead of stepping, instead of staying in faith, I took an opportunity and I folded it up and put it in a covenant book. Think about this. Think about what I'm saying. As soon as you step out of faith, you step into fear. And you're going to reap the results so, so I'm learning. If I'm going to learn and go through something and pay for it, I think I ought to tell you so you don't have to pay for it. Does that make sense to anybody? As long as you're always, you know, thinking what you can do or how you can do or you're always planning, you're going to get your plans. But once you really get in faith, all right, let's move on. I can tell I'm... Belief is the ability to say that wholeheartedly with no mental reservation. Belief is the ability to say, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Galatians 2.20 Then God can act. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs 3 Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall what? Direct your path. Take what belongs to you and know that no word from God shall be void of power. Who's believed our report? Isaiah 53, 1. Whose report will you believe? Isaiah asked in effect, whose report do you believe? We choose to believe 
the Lord's good report. We learn to trust God and believe His Word even in the midst of challenging circumstances. Amen. Till Osborne, many years ago, was in Jakarta, Indonesia. And he noticed that someone was in a stretcher off the platform, laying there. And he said, bring that man up here on the platform. It's on video. If you can watch it, you can read the story. 50,000 people was there in that meeting. So not only is there 50,000 witnesses, but... There's all the testimony and the video and all of it. So this is, you know, exactly how it happened. And in and, and Indonesia, there's Muslims, Buddhists, and Christians. And T.L. Osborne knew that that was the strong, strong man in that area, Buddhist and, and Muslim. So he said, all right, bring him up here. This is what we're going to do. He said, we're going to pray in the name of Buddha. This, take, this takes a lot of faith. So he laid hands on that man. He said, in the name of Buddha, we declare him healed. They stood there and watched, and the man didn't get up. Till Osborne said, we know Buddha don't have the power to heal because this man's still laying in a stretcher. Till Osborne said, all right, let's pray in the name of Muhammad. He said he laid hands on the man. He said, in the name of Muhammad, we declare that this man gets up and walks. That man just laid there. He said, he said, well, it's obvious that this man is not up and walking and Muhammad doesn't have the power to heal. He said, now everybody get your faith with mine in the name of Jesus. See, he said his faith on a mark. And everybody there was watching intently. And he laid hands on this man and he said, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to rise up and walk. That man got straight up out of that stretcher. It went around the nation. The next night there was 100,000 people in that meeting. Now, are we operating by faith? Well, we're learning. I said, and we're, and we're growing. The Lord told me today, He said, I want you to get rid of a statement for me. He said, I want you to get rid of I will be. He said, I want you to get rid of I may be. He said, I want you to get rid of I shall be. He said, I want you to start using the word I am. Say it again. I am. I am more than a conqueror. I am in faith. I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. I'm made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You got, you got to get I am statements in your mouth. Amen. You got to get them in your mouth. You got to speak them over everything you do. And you can't say someday we will, I will be. Someday we'll get there. Look, some days behind. Right now, we are. So a universal, I believe, sin consciousness is the birthing place of why we don't see miracles. Now, I, I'm going to stagger you. I think when you don't know who you are and you don't have more awareness of who you are in Christ, then you'll never be empowered to see real miracles in your life. Because you're sin conscious, you're, you're, you're driven by who you were. It, and, and, and believe it or not, sin consciousness is the parent of most religions in the earth. People have sought to rid themselves of guilt and sin 
the fear of the spirit of evil that dominates the atmosphere of this world. The sin consciousness was born at the fall. It was manifested in Adam's fear to cover his nakedness. The revelation of God and the development of that revelation have been to one end, to restore righteousness to mankind. The meaning of righteousness in this sense is the ability to stand in the presence of God without a sense of sin, guilt, or inferiority. He created us in His image. Now this, is, this is beyond most people's teaching here. We're, we're trying to say that, that just like Bill Winston said, I love what he said. He said, the angels, the day God created man went. For a moment, till God spoke again, they didn't know which one He was. First time I heard it, I thought, bah, I can't swallow that. It's gagging me. It's like tofu in my throat. It's too big. The more I chew it, the bigger it got. God said, if you don't see yourself in my image. Many years ago, I, I fell in love with Pastor Fair, which is a good thing. You've got to love her to stay with her. She's got to love me to stay with me. That's how it works. <laughs> it works on both sides. And uh, thank God he's working on both of us to make us better at that. Right? So one day I was in a low point in my life and I needed, you know, I needed love, fellowship. And I'm looking into her eyes, you know, like I never have looked at nobody. And I saw, this is, this is really crazy, you may have already seen this, but when I was looking into her eyes, I saw myself in her eyes. Right. And I thought, and God spoke to me. And I didn't know this, I don't remember the translation, but if you look through the translations where it says that the apple of his eye, yeah. Yeah. there's one translation that says the little man. In other words, when you're looking into the eye of God, you not only see His eyes, but you see yourself in His image. We've been looking into the wrong eyes. We've been looking into what the world says about us, what our family says about us, what our history says about us, when God has much greater things to say about you. Amen? 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 Amen. So the question tonight is this. Has God provided redemption to take away wrong thoughts? Has He? Has God provided, according to His Word, and His his Son Jesus, what He did on the cross of Calvary, has has it been enough to take away wrong thinking, sin consciousness, and permit mankind to return to His presence and remain there? That's the question that you're going to have to solidify in your life. 